go. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. This is Freddie Vasquez with Basement Politics Unfiltered. Tonight, connecting the dots. Mike Spano and the flip-flopping majority leaders. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Today is December. Hope you all had a beautiful Christmas day. Kids are happy. They got a lot of gifts. And I don't want to talk about corruption. Connecting the dots. Current Mayor Mike Spano and the uh, flip-flopping majority leaders. How you guys doing tonight? Good evening, folks. Happy uh, holidays. Obviously, that happy Merry Christmas, right? Uh, I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics. Tonight, I want to come on and just you know, talk about some uh, more connecting the dots. And I want to include uh, Mike Spano now, connecting the dots to Empire Strategic Planning and some of the corruption that has happened here in the city of Yonkers, going back to the Sandy and Abbey trial up to now and what's going on here and how it's all connected. And really, I mean, nothing has changed. It doesn't seem like anything quite has changed here in the city of Yonkers. Uh, so I want to start uh, by going back to, and I did mention this um, in a previous podcast, the 2012 case or trial of Zahi Jarris and Sandy Anabi and the Forest City Ratner development scandal that happened. Uh, I just want to give a little bit of, of background. So if you don't know about it, uh, the uh, Forest City Ratner were developers who, based in Brooklyn, who wanted to develop Ridge Hill, what we see it to be today now, right? And initially, the majority of the city council were against it. And so, Ridge, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Forest City Ratner, had a guy by the name of uh, Bruce Bender working for them, senior vice president, vice, uh, yeah, senior vice president, who was very well, you know, connected in politics. And so he needed to get this deal done, right? Uh, Mr. Ratner and uh, this guy, Bruce, who was working for them. So he reached out to a gentleman by the name of Albert Piero. Albert Piero uh, is the husband, or they might've got divorced, I'm not sure. Oh, at the time, anyway, was married to uh, Janine Piero. She was the Westchester County District Attorney, and she was very powerful, very big, and uh, her husband uh, had a lot of pull, so they reached out to him, and he was paid a million dollars. They gave this guy a million-dollar consulting job with Forest City Ratner so they can get the Yonker City Council on board. So in order for Mr. Piero to do that, he reached out to the Spanos, Nick Spano and Mike Spano, and they try to help out as well to get the city council on board. In 2001, a gentleman by the name of Zahi Jarris was driving in his car when he spotted, according to uh, his testimony, Sandy and Nabi. And it was love at first sight. And he just fell in love. She was beautiful. She was gorgeous. This is a uh, quotes that he actually said himself. And, you know, he fell in love. It was love at first sight. And from there on, he just engaged in a not a relationship because they actually didn't have a romantic relationship, but they had a political relationship. And what I found interesting was that he's saying that I saw her in 2001 and I fell in love while I was driving. She had on a blue summer dress. And that same year, he started managing her political career. So it, while they didn't romantically get involved or that didn't evolve, their political relationship did. And he managed her career successfully in 2001 she was voted in as a city council woman city council member for here in yonkers right so he knew sandy and he was managing her in the same way that today he manages the majority leader tasha diaz but in 2012 when he was in uh on trial he uh tried to say that he had just met her but the reality is is that he scouted her he found this person and he said you'd be perfect for politics he got her in there and he started to run her and she won. This is what he does. He manages elected officials for his benefit. 
that's what he does. And so along with, uh, you know, going back to uh, Forest City Ratner, along with Piero, now they had Nick Spano, Mike Spano, who was an assemblyman at the time. Mike Spano actually became an assemblyman in 1992, all the way up until he became mayor in, you know, 2011. But he had like a, a period there back in 2005 where he was actually working as a consultant. And Forest City Ratner was utilizing him as well through Albert Piero to be a consultant, an influential consultant here in the city of Yonkers. And so in, according to uh, you know emails that were sent by Mike Spano in 2005, he says uh, to uh, Bruce Bender, the senior vice president for Forest City, he says, uh, we've tried every angle. She won't move this Sandy. That's what he says. We've tried every angle. She won't move this Sandy. Everyone has talked more than once to her. This is an, from emails that, again, was written by Mike Spano, our current mayor, to Bruce Bender, the senior vice president of Forest City Ratner, the developers at the time. Uh, then Bruce responded by saying, <clears throat> excuse me, we need your brother. Get your brother. Need Sandy on board now. That was his response to Mike Spano, meaning get Nick Spano. We need Sandy on board now. Sandy would not talk to Forest City Ratner at all when she became city council president. In fact, Bruce Bender even said that he tried reaching out to her directly at her in place of employment. She was working at a hospital and she told him not to call here anymore and just hung up. So they were really desperate to get, uh, you know, all the council members on board to get this approval for this project because they already had spent $72 million. And that's something that we are seeing now. These developers are buying property to develop uh, projects that are not even zoned for in that area. So they can't even do it if they wanted to. But yet they're spending millions of dollars on these properties. It's like they know that the zoning laws are going to change, right? It's, it, and it does. They do. They change the zoning laws. Like They know about this, right? It happened over uh, on Hudson Street for the 44 Hudson Terrace. They bought the property before the zoning laws were changed. And that's why they had to push out those uh, individuals from the Zoning Board of Appeals because they would not change the law, right? So they eventually did that. And as well as Leak and Watts property bought by Joe Carter here. He spent $55 million, Some have even said 90 to build studios. But the area is not zoned for studios. But they're going to be changing that soon, right, with the low rezoning and all that stuff over there. That's the whole big deal about that. So anyway, going back to Sandy and Nabi, you know, in my opinion... This was all a setup with this Forest City Hill Ratner deal, right? It was all a shakedown of the developer. They went and got Piero. Piero reached out to the Spanos. And I believe, in my opinion, that the Spanos saw an opportunity here. Let's get some money. We can shake them down. Zahi Jerris, who was a close uh, associate and still is of Nick Spano, he came up under Nick Spano. He learned everything he knows, according to sources, from Nick Spano was in control of Sandy and Nabi. He gained her control by giving her gifts. This started right away. He paid for a lease on her Mercedes. He paid for her student loans, other cash gifts, a co-op, and another property, a house. And so he did this in order to garner favors in return. As the judge said in the case, when you accepted those gifts, you opened yourself up to be asked for favors later on. And some say that she was manipulated and she didn't know. But in my opinion, you know, even if she was not a politician, Zahi Jarris at the time and still is, was a married man with two kids. So even accepting any gifts from a married man is still wrong. But that was, you know... Um, when she said they were just gifts, Zahi tried to use the defense of being in love with her. That's why he said it was love at first sight. But that was not true. And Sandy and Nabi never corroborated that. Not one bit at all. I think she found that maybe even disgusting. But he said he was in love and he would do anything for her. And that's what the gifts were for. But the reality is the gifts were for her, you know, vote to influence her voting. And this was a time now that he needed favors back. We need you to change your vote, Sandy. 
And so they dragged it on for a year before she would finally change her vote. But she would not meet with them at all. And even Mike Spano in his email said we were having trouble getting her to, you know, see things our way, basically. But they eventually did. And Zahi Jarris would eventually get Sandy and Nabi to meet with Bruce Bender. They met a few times. One of the meetings took place at Jake's Steakhouse in the Bronx. But how did she get, oh, how did they get the meeting? Well, one of the things that they had to do was promise Zahi Jarris a job. Uh, Albert Piero was uh, uh, even, you know, told Dennis Robertson that if Zahi got the job, it was a sure thing. She was going to go ahead and change her vote. And that's all they needed to do was give him a consulting job. And so Sandy and Nabi met a few times and she changed her vote. She decided to vote yes and supported the project, although she was vocal in her opposition. So why did all of a sudden, after a few meetings, did she change her vote? Well, according to Sandy and Nabi, she was able to negotiate $10 more million for the Yonkers Public Schools, developer agreed to pay that, as well as half a million dollars for a traffic study. And that's interesting when I read that because, uh, you know, Mike Cater also makes the claim in his lawsuit that he has that the city of Yonkers, specifically the Spanos, Mike Spano, wanted the taxpayers to pay half a million dollars for the traffic study and environmental study over at the Ludlow uh, uh, TOD proposal, transit-oriented district. And so what is it with this half a million dollars in these studies? Was Zahi Jarris on behalf of Nick Spano and Mike Spano trying to get these developers to pay for another project study? Was that what that was? Well, Sandy and Nabi eventually changed her vote in 2006 after a year of, you know, playing the game with the developers. For that, Zahi Jarris received a consulting job worth $60,000. And everyone was happy. Forest City got to do their development. Sandy and Nabi got her gifts and whatever, whatever else she received. Zahi Jarris got his $60,000 consulting fee. Albert Piero got a million dollars. Anthony Mangone ended up going to jail. Anthony Mangone was the attorney that was also connected to Nick Spano. He was the bag man. He was the guy that would bring the money, you know, from Zahi Jarris to, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, to Zahi Jarris, sometimes to Sandy and Nabi from the developers or whoever else. He was the bag man. And in fact, he was a bag man also for the mob. There was, he was on some wiretaps uh, uh, for a sting operation that the FBI was doing in the Bronx. So he had a, history there. And so then in 2010, the Fed started investigating. They started investigating this whole flip-flop. And they start wondering why did Sandy and Nabi decide to change her vote? And they started looking into it. They started to find the gifts that she was receiving from Zahi Jarris. And they both were indicted. Zahi Jarris, again, tried to use the excuse that he was in love with her. And those were love gifts that he were get, he was giving her. But the uh, prosecutor said, no way. He was buying her vote. Sandy and Nabi was taking bribes. And she took a bribe. And she took bribes to change her vote on the uh, Ridge Hill project. Zahi Jarris also took bribes. The $60,000 that he received as a consultant. That was his bribe. And so he received four years in federal prison. She received six years in federal prison after the decision was made in 2012. You know, uh, something interesting, uh, the prosecution, they wanted the judge to give them uh, Sandy Nabi 14 years and Zahi Jarris 12 years. And as upset as the judge said she was and how upset she said that the people should be over political corruption, she gave them six and four years respectively a lot less than what the prosecution recommended. And so I started to think, was the judge, you know, somewhat corrupt? Was she also, you know, friendly with these individuals? And that's why Zahi Jarris felt comfortable taking it to trial. But the minute Anthony Mangone, right, he, he pleaded guilty, he kind of snitched on them, right? If he pled guilty, he says, yeah, I did this, then he basically admitted that there was illegal stuff going on. So, at, you know, at the end of the day, he kind of hurt their case. So, but anyway, so... That I want to connect that to the most recent, you know, 
Majority Leader Tasha Diaz and her flip-flop on the housing ordinance. It's pretty much the same exact thing. And now I'm wondering, will we see another federal corruption trial involving Zahi Jarris, Tasha Diaz quite possibly, and others? I mean, there's a lot going on here in the city of Yonkers today, even more so than it was then. You're talking about a lot of these zoning changes that are happening. Why are they taking place? Why did Tasha Diaz, you know, um, like Sandy and Abby, uh, support the affordable housing ordinance, even voting yes and getting it passed until the mayor vetoed it? And then she decided that, you know what, it wasn't a good ordinance, so I'm not going to override the mayor's veto and I'm going to vote no on it. Surprising everybody. I mean, she never said, hey, I'm thinking about changing it, like Sandy and Nabi. Sandy and Nabi never said, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about changing my vote, and this is why. <clears throat> didn't speak to the people, didn't speak to the constituents, the voters, nothing. Just one minute you're adamant about one way, then you change and you're adamant about that. Why? Why? And so I want to connect those dots. So I want people to see this clearly that we still have elected officials that are corrupt here in the city of Yonkers. Currently, Nick Spano has a company called Empire Strategic Planning. They are a lobbying firm. And their clients are many of these developers that are developing here in the city of Yonkers now. Developers like AMS Acquisitions. Developers like Ginsburg and the Leila Gorin Group. Now, what impact have they had on the voting of our city council members? Mike Spano was a consultant. He's a supposed he was supposed to be an assemblyman, but he was also a consultant. And he was trying to get Sandy and Nabi to change her vote on the Ridge Hill deal. He said in an email, she won't move. We've tried. We've talked to her more than once. Everyone has. Everyone meaning Nick Spano, Albert Piero, Zahi Jarris. But th were they really having trouble or were they playing the developers? Why did uh, Mike Spano just call Zahi right away? Why did he say, hey, Zahi, we know you, you know, are the guy behind Sandy. We need her to change her vote. Why did he email the developers and say, hey, uh, you know, we're having trouble. We've tried everything. To which the Bruce Bender, who represented the developers, said, well, we need your brother. We need him now. We need to get Sandy on board. And they did. They got her to finally meet. But why did Mike Spano call, uh, you know, Nick and Zahi directly? I mean, they had a relationship, right? That's his brother, Zahi and uh, Nick Spano are very close. They go back. So in my opinion, they were hustling the developers. They were shaking them down. They were dragging them along. I don't believe anybody was innocent in this. I believe everybody was getting as much as they could. They wanted to see how far they could take this with these developers. How much could we get out of it? I believe that that's what it was. But I want to go back to the fact that Mike Spano was a consultant for the developers. Right? And so was his brother. And basically, so was Zahi Jarris. Zahi Jarris was a consultant and also a campaign manager for candidates or elected officials that were in office at the time. Is that not a conflict of interest? And that's still happening today. Is Mike Spano still a consultant? We know his brother is. We know his brother owns Empire, I'm sorry, yeah, Empire Strategic Planning. We know that AMS Acquisitions is one of their clients. They're building the Teutonia, <clears throat> excuse me. They're building uh, Chicken Island all up, <clears throat> sorry. And Locust Hill and North Broadway, they're building another big, a residential there. So it is in their best interest to see the housing ordinance fail and then have it stalled until they're done developing. So they're going to go to Nick Spano and say, hey, you know, that guy Mike Cater, he introduced this legislation to increase the affordable housing ordinance to 20%. Now we can't have that. I thought we had a deal, Nick. That's why we hired you. And so again, Nick Spano 
and Zahi Jarrus reach out to the majority leader like they did back in 2005. Who the majority leader was Sandy and Nabi back then, Democratic. Now this time, well, she wasn't majority leader then, but it was Tasha Diaz of the third district. And she was one of the three main supporters. It was Mike Cater who authored it, Shanae Williams who introduced it, and the reason why she introduced it was because they felt that it would get more traction if she did, a black woman, right? All this identity politics. And Tasha Diaz, uh, Corazon was kind of, huh? you know, she said she would have supported a 15% ordinance, but she also voted yes. John Rubel was against it, but then he voted yes. And it passed. It passed. But was that a game? Was that a game that they were playing on the people because they knew that the mayor was going to veto it? Again, remember, John Rubo was against it, and then he changed his vote and voted yes, and it passed. Then the, the, the mayor came and vetoed it. And without warning, Tasha Diaz failed to override the veto. She didn't say, hey, you know what? I don't like it, really. This is wrong with it. I, I think I made a mistake. Nothing. Nothing. And so, uh, you know, again, in, in my meetings, you know, and having met with Zahi Jarris, one of the questions that I had asked him was about the affordable housing. And I said to him, did you have an influence on Tasha Diaz's vote? Did you get her to switch her vote? He said no. He said no. But he said that he doesn't know if the talk that the mayor had with them before they went to vote had any impact. But it's the mayor that vetoed the housing ordinance. Why would he be having an impact on them? Why would he be talking to them? And now, again, was he having a discussion with them on behalf of his brother, Nick Spano, the lobbying uh, you know, firm that he owns that is representing AMS and other clients? Clients like Ginsburg, who's going to be developing over at Lullo, and Leila Gorin, who wants to develop over at the power plant. So you see, folks, this is the conflict of interest that we have here in the city of Yonkers. This is a problem. And this is why we cannot have another four years. Mayor Spano, his brother Nick, John Rubo, they're all Republicans. Zahi Jarris, all Republicans. Zahi Jarris was the former chairman of the Yonkers Republican Party. So they were all Republicans. And they all ended up getting caught up in this. Although Nick Spano didn't go to jail for this corruption at the Ridge Hill, he ended up going to jail for tax evasion. Zahi Jarris would go away, Sandy and Nabi would go away, and then Mike Spano, the Republican, would change parties before becoming mayor. And then Nick Spano came home, then Zahi Jarris came home, Zahi Jarris became a Democrat, John Rubo switched to become a Democrat. And they took over the Democratic Party. And that's where we are today. They control the Democratic Party. They are doing exactly today what they did in 2012. How can Zahi Jarris be the campaign manager for Tasha Diaz, for Lakeisha Collins Bellamy, the city council president, John Rubo, and also be tied to Nick Spano's Empire Strategic Planning? and also tied to the mayor. They're going to do everything that the developers want. The developers wanted Mike Spano in office another four years. They got a legislation passed that would allow him to run again. And he's going to be funded by these developers, like they all are. And they're going to continue building luxury developments that the city just cannot, you know, really stand. I'm actually going to be talking about another podcast about the um, the uh, pipes, the gas lines that cannot hold all the developments that are happening. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with the sustainable Westchester switch. And then going back to Con Edison, I'll be talking about that in another podcast. They cannot withstand all the developments that are happening. But the city as a whole, all the traffic, all the crowds, 
I mean, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. And uh, so I want people to see that. I want people to see that Zahi Jerris is still operating here in the city of Yonkers. And that is why I am under attack the way they are attacking me. They are posting my daughter up on their pages now. And I went to Brian uh, Harrod's apartment yesterday. Yep, I knocked on the door. Oh, well, some woman actually came and she, I asked her, I said, do you know where Brian Harrod uh, lives? And she said, Brian, oh yeah. And she walked right into his apartment. His door was is open, unlocked. And she said, hey, Brian, someone's here to see you. And he gets up and he looks and this freaking, this guy, you had to see this guy. This is the guy behind this computer. But I don't know if it's really him or all. I believe Frankie Jarris, which is an administrator, had a lot to do with it. Frankie Jarris is the son of Zahi Jarris. And that is why they're attacking me. So he comes out and he says, oh, Freddie Vasquez. Oh, and he extends his hand out, arm out to shake my hand. I looked at him like, yeah, okay. I said, what's your problem? I said, now you're putting my daughter up there? I said, now you're crossing a line that I, I it's just, I, I, I'm here now. I'm at your door. It's my kids. You're endangering my kids by posting them on there and your stupid nonsense, right? And so, you know, I'm going to, you know, we're still dealing with that now, but that's why they're doing this to me. That's why they're attacking my business. They're attacking my wife. They're attacking me, my kids, because I'm speaking about this corruption. The FBI should be looking into this. Why is the FBI not investigating Tasha Diaz right now? It's beyond me. And maybe they are. I don't know. But they should be investigating Tasha Diaz's flip-flop. It is exactly what happened in 2012. Or I'm saying actually in, 20, in 2006 actually it happened. The case was in 2012. Same exact thing. You have the same characters. You have Zahi Jerris. You have Nick Spano. You have Mike Spano. And what they've done now is they've eliminated some of the middlemen like Anthony Mangone and uh, Albert Pirro. Now it's just a small circle. And Zahi Jerris controls these elected officials. That is his hustle. That is his game. You want to do business in Yonkers, you have to pay. I didn't pay. I wasn't going to pay. Nick Spano wanted to meet with me. We never met. But what was that meeting about? Were you going to say, well, if you want to do your daycares here in Yonkers, you know, you should hire strategic uh, Empire Strategic Planning. Was that going to be the conversation? Is that how you are successful here in the city of Yonkers? You got to pay attention to what's happening. Uh, very recently, there was a, a radio show on WNYC in regards to the term limit extension. They had guests come on and, or speak, call in, I should say. And there was one woman named Marty who just moved to Yonkers maybe about a year ago, who has friends who own businesses in the city who would not do business in Yonkers because according to her friends, you have to pay to play. And so I started to wonder after she said that, is that why we have not had businesses coming into Yonkers? Because they just will not pay to play. And so has the Spano family, Empire Strategic Planning and others kept Yonkers from really progressing? Have they stalled progress, waiting for the right people who are willing to pay and then finally found them? Remember, uh, folks, the... Uh, baseball stadium that was supposed to be put up in Chicken Island. Whatever happened to that? Well, Amicone was not reelected, right? He couldn't. He turned out, right? Because they we had term limits. He turned out. And when the Spanos took over, they came in, took over the ideas, but changed them up a bit, brought in new developers, developers that would hire Empire Strategic Planning, developers like AMS, who ended up buying Chicken Island. And now they're going to put four to five luxury developments there. Residential, no baseball field. Baseball field would have been better. The luxury developments are not for the people of Yonkers. The baseball field would have brought in revenue, would have brought in real jobs, not just construction jobs, but a bunch more sustained jobs. And, you know, the games would have brought, you know, people in and to spend money. But instead, they, you know, changed the plans now. It's AMS. And AMS, again, it, they're clients of Nick Spano. So I want people to connect that. I want you to see what happened 
uh, in 2006 when Sandy Anabi changed her vote on the Ridge Hill deal. Forest City Ratner, the developers, went and reached out to Albert Piero, then husband of Janine Piero, the Westchester County DA, who reached out to Nick Spano. Nick Spano enlisted the help of his brother, Mike Spano, the current mayor, and Zahi Jerris, then GOP chairman, Yonkers GOP, Republican Party chairman. He had control of Sandy Anabi. He managed her campaign and got her elected in 2001. So along with uh, Zahi, Sandy Anabi, Mike Spano, Nick, they played a game, I believe, on Forest City Ratner, and they stalled it, trying to see how much they can squeeze them for. <clears throat> Eventually, they settled on, you know, a $60,000 consulting deal for Zahi Jerris. Sandy Anabi would get, uh, you know, cash gifts, a Mercedes-Benz lease, loan payments paid for, a co-op and a house. And what did the Spanos get? I believe their reward was getting... Mike Spano into office, becoming mayor. That was his reward. And so Mike Spano, again, was part of trying to persuade Sandy and Nobby back then. It's in the court documents. It's there. He sent emails stating that he has been trying to get Sandy and Nobby to change her vote, but she wouldn't move. She wouldn't budge. And so he was told to get the help of his brother, and he did. But I think that that was their plan from the get-go. I think Mike Spano just sent those as a game. Say, hey, we can't get, you know, we're trying here. You know, maybe we got to see what else we could do, right? Let's see if we could squeeze them for more money. And they eventually got more money. They got $10 million for the Yonkers Public Schools. But where did that money really go? They got another half a million dollars for a traffic study. But where did that money really go? Right. And so today we are at the same place. We have Empire Strategic Planning still controlling our elected officials, which is why we need to vote these people out. It's time to them to get out. So, folks, what time is it? 30 minutes, half hour. Perfect. Just want to do a quick um, thing on that. But, you know, I was thinking, you know, with the Mike Cater thing and I and I and I reached out to some people and I spoke to him and I said, you know, Mike Cater was brought into politics by Zahi Jarris. Right. He ran his first campaign and all that. And he, you know, he got him in there. I mean, he Zay, he knows how to win, right? That's why people go to him. He's made himself the kingmaker. He's got Tasha Diaz elected. Right? He gets people in office. Uh, you know, it's not always legit. I mean, uh, in my uh opinion, uh, there's a lot of ballot harvesting taking place. His sister mysteriously found 18 ballots to help Nick Spano win in 2014. Um, he was also, it was also alleged in the 2012 case that Zahi Jerris, um, you know, was offered or, or was offering $10,000 to um, change another candidate or to, to stop a candidate from running for office. So they, they cheat, right? They, they do different ways to cheat. So it's not really legitimate stuff, but I was thinking, how did he get Mike Cater? And if he got Mike Cater, he was managing him, you know, who, uh, you know, I asked around, I said, why did Mike Cater author the affordable housing to be, you know, ordinance to begin with the new one, right? What, was that Zahi Jerris's idea? Was that, you know, and then I was told that he ran on it. That was his platform because we are in a housing crisis. We need more affordable housing, right? And so Mike Cater wa altered it and wanted to, you know, pass his 20%. But if Zahi Jerris was his campaign manager, if, you know, obviously Zahi Jerris would be against it because he, he really, you know, works with the developers, right? So was that something that they, you know, set up? And I was thinking that did they set this up and say, hey, let's let's introduce or act like we're gonna, you know, want to pass this affordable housing to kind of shake things up, right? Kind of shake up the developers here now, and uh, you know, so they can make some money. I don't know, but I was told that that was part of Mike Cater's campaign, and that was something that Zahi Jarvis was against. He didn't want Mike Cater to. Uh, you know, introduce or get a housing ordinance passed. And that was one of the reasons that, you know, they started to have problems in their relationship, you know, and eventually uh, Zahi Jarvis, along with, you know, um, according to sources, the Spanos got rid of Mike Cater because he just, he wanted to do things that were going against the developer's uh, benefit. They didn't want a 20% housing. They didn't want to put any more affordable housing or set aside any more apartments in their luxury developments or to be affordable units. They didn't want that, right? And they didn't want to have to pay more, you know, if they were going to opt out of it, right, as they could, 
it, it, but they would still have to pay for them. They would still have to put the millions of dollars for those apartments into the affordable housing trust fund. So it still would cost them money, right? And they didn't want that. So Nick Spano had to make sure that the affordable housing was not going to pass. And he obviously went to his number one assassin, Zahi Jarris, and he got it done through his candidates. And that's how it happens here. That's how it works here. And I want people to understand that. That is why we have to come out and vote for change. We have to vote for change. District 1, Sinead Williams, we have to vote for change. District 3, that's Tasha Diaz. We know for a fact she is bought and paid for by Zahi Jarris. We have to vote her out. We have to vote her out. Time and time again, she has proven that she works for the developers. Look how she speaks to constituents. Look how she displayed herself, you know, in public, on live, in a live meeting, an important meeting, where they had all these different, you know, LOHA, News 12, the Journal News, you had everybody there watching, and that's how she behaved. She's got to go. She's got to go. And Mayor Spano, we cannot afford to have him in for another four years. He does not represent the people uh, of the city of Yonkers. He doesn't represent what is in the best interest of the people of the city of Yonkers. They're basically working on behalf of the developers. FBI, where are you guys at? I mean, don't you see the same thing happening or the same thing happened again? You guys don't see it? You know, where are you guys at? Why are you not investigating? You know, I, I don't understand that. So I want to connect those dots, folks. Mike Spano, again, is a consultant. His brother is a consultant. James Cavanaugh, YIDA president, is a Empire Strategic Planning Consultant. John Spano is an Empire Strategic Consultant. So we have to get them out. They work for the developers, folks. Anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez, based on politics. Did I leave anything out? Uh, you know, uh, Piero said, he was quoted as saying, uh, he told uh, Dennis Robertson that, uh, uh, it, it was a short thing as long as they he would get a job. I thought that was interesting. You know, these these are all these individuals are all involved, man. They're all involved. It's corrupt. They're corrupt. It's, it's, they're all involved. All involved. So anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. Merry Christmas. I just want to come on and connect the dots. That's important. You know, it's important that you guys see that, how that works. How does politics in Yonkers work? Well, that's how it works right now. They say that Nick Spano is the unofficial mayor of the city of Yonkers. Through his empire strategic planning, he dominates the city, right? And his mayor has to stay in there for another four years. They have to control the government. It's a must that they control it. They're going to have to fight hard also to keep Tasha Diaz, the Sinead, these individuals, unless they can find new candidates. But I don't know if they're going to find new candidates that will do their bidding the way they do. So, you know, they're going to fight hard to maintain uh, their, their positions because they have to stay in there. The developments are not done. They're not done. It's not over. But uh, it's important that we know that and why I'm calling for this change, why I'm being attacked the way I'm being attacked. Folks, please don't don't pay attention to that nonsense on those other pages. Yo. It's unbelievable. But they're coming at me hard. And that's why it's very important. Uh, anything else that I forget here, folks? Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know. Again. Yeah, again, again, I want to make sure that you understand how it works. The hustle, right? The hustle. They use their lobbying firm, right, to get clients like these developers to pay them. And businesses, companies like Empress, St. Joseph Hospitals are all paying Nick Spano's lobbying company, right? And then Zahi Jarris. He's the guy that controls the candidates. That's his role. He and Vinny Spano control the city council. That is their job. That is their job. And they will do what they need to do, including attack anyone who speaks out against them. Anyone. Anyone who speaks out against them. And so you see how Tasha Diaz got hooked up, right? When she changed, she killed the affordable housing ordinance, she became majority leader. She got her office all done up nice, right? She spent a lot of taxpayer money to redo her office. She, uh, her, her uh, aide, Brenton Bullock, is making $93,000 a year. And according to an anonymous source, he has to kick her back some of that money. And it, it would make sense. 
because they don't make that much money. They make maybe like fifty thousand dollars. The, the chief of staff and you know other staff there for the city council members. Why is he getting ninety three thousand dollars? Right. See, they can't do it the way they did it before with Sandy and Nobby, right? You can't pay for the Mercedes, can't pay the student loans. That's too obvious. You can't be involved in any property. That's too obvious. So what they've done now is they've given them positions or opportunities to make more money, you know, in their jobs or whatever, or hooking up their families. Right? So that's how they do it. So it kind of looks legit. You, you know, she gets a majority leader title. She makes more money that way. Brenton Bullocks makes ninety three dollars. I mean ninety three thousand. Ninety three thousand. She kicks her back some of that. That's more money right there. She has this, uh, it, you know, crazy budget that they get. Right, they get to spend whatever, and all these allowances. They get a car. She's got a vehicle, right? So it may not be a Mercedes, but she's got a free car. So that's how they do it now, and then they'll give her daughter a job. They'll give their sisters, their moms jobs, husbands jobs, and they're all getting paid the same way that um, Sandy and Nabi was. They are all getting it. They are getting paid. And for that, they are screwing the people of the city of Yonkers. I'm Freddie Vasquez, folks. Um, I, I'm going to be putting up some of these uh, articles here. Check them out if you want to read them. Ex-official Yonkers faces charges of corruption. He gave her, uh, Sandy Anabi received almost $167,000 in cash and gifts in exchange for dropping her opposition, right? Some people say that she was innocent. She was, I don't think so. You know, at the end of the day, again, you're not even supposed to be taking gifts from a married man, period. So the fact that she was accepting those gifts, she knew why she was taking those gifts. She knew why she was accepting that money. She was going to have to, you know, change her vote, do some things, you know, uh, that um, they were going to ask of her. Say he Jerry's got 60 G's there. You see that. Uh, so, yeah, that's still going on. That's still going on. Uh, if you, you should take a look at these. Very interested on New York Times. Very interesting stuff. And this is why I said I, I have taken every single, this is the email from Mike Spano. I have taken every single angle with this Sandy, Mike Spano, a consultant, wrote on September 25th, 2005 in an email to Bruce Bender, then a Forest City executive. Mr. Spano had also enlisted others, including union heads. They do that now. The Yonkers Republican Party chairman, Zahi Jarris, a well-connected lawyer, Anthony Mangone, and his brother, State Senator Nicholas Spano. So they were all involved in this. We have all talked to her more than once, Mr. Spano wrote. She has not moved. Then Mr. Bender responds bluntly, get Sandy on board on BD. Tell your brother we need help now. It took almost a year before Miss Anabi agreed to reverse her position, but she did. After she sat down with Mr. Bender in meetings arranged by the Rep Yonkers Republican chairman, Zahi Jerris. You see this corruption? After the city council approved the project in July 2006, Forest City Ratner gave Jerris a $60,000 consulting deal. So you don't think that that's happening now with Empire Strategic Planning, AMS, John Rubo? And how did John Rubo, where did John Rubo get the funds to start Yonkers Brewing Company? What was he doing before that? Was he making a lot of money uh, at his company, A Perfect Solution, John Rubo, Inc.? How did he get the bread, right? What did he do with that PPP loan? He obviously didn't pay his, didn't pay his employees. What did he do with that money? And so if, if Mike Spano was a consulting then and he was helping developers and uh, change Yonkers City Council members' votes, do you think he's not doing the same thing now on behalf of his brother, along with Zahi Jarris? Let's be honest. Look at what Tasha Diaz did. Why would Lakeisha Collins Bellamy introduce legislation by herself to extend term limits? Why?
Testimonies and emails introduced as evidence have offered an uh, an unvarnished look in, at how the company carried out a relentless behind the scenes quest to get the project approved. Well po connected politicos were hired as consultants. Again, that's what they do now. Public officials were asked to apply pressure. Meetings occurred at Jake's Steakhouse in Madison's in the Bronx. In one episode, a Forest City executive had to kick Mr. Bender under the table because a third executive had gotten too confrontational. And by the way, that guy, uh, Andrew Beveridge, the guy that's, that was by himself there, who's going to be doing the redistricting map, he was a Democratic ward leader back in the day. Is that fair to the Republicans? He's an insider. <laughs> He's going to screw you guys, you Republicans. Nolan, they're going to screw you over there in District 15. And Yonkers, in the Yonkers project, Mike Spano, now the city's mayor, was one of the influential consultants that Forest City Ratner used to lobby city council members. Another was Albert J. Pirro Jr., a Westchester County power broker. Married to, right? He was paid a million dollars, Mr. Piero. Mr. Spano testified last week about Mr. Bender's uh, bru bru brusque, brusque, brusque emails. In a 2005, he was really being pushy, really being persistent, wanting to know every second that he could pass, every second that he could possibly, that he possibly could. What are you doing to try and get positive outcome for the project? This is Mr. Bender, Bruce Bender, talking to uh, Mike Spano. John Murtaugh, a former Republican councilman who voted against the project, testified that Mr. Pirro once called seeking his vote, saying that the developer was willing to give Yonkers more money. I could take credit for having negotiated with them, Mr. Mur Murtaugh testified. I believe his words were, the project will get passed and you'll be the hero. Interesting. Reminds me of the, of the uh, letter that uh, Jeffrey Buss from uh, Smith Bus Jacobs wrote to Liam McLaughlin, stating that council members had called him to apologize for the investigation that they were now involved in, but it was political pressure. <laughs> Anyone going to investigate that? Uh, I was trying for weeks and months and, and using all possible resources to set up a meeting. Mr. Bender testified. Uh, he even added that he got in, uh, he had gotten in touch with anybody that I could find that might know her. So they were desperately trying to get her in touch. They spent millions of dollars. They needed this to pass. He even called her at a Yonkers hospital where she worked. She hung up on me and said, don't ever call me here at my place of work. But eventually they did get her. So, uh, so a Forest City... Uh, spokesman Joe uh, said on Wednesday that critics have focused unfairly on the developer's role. And you know what? I, I believe this when they say this. He says, this is really about a company trying with great difficulty to navigate the Byzantine maze of politics in Yonkers. Right? So he's basically saying, I mean, look, we got to do what we got to do. If we want to do business in Yonkers, this is what they put us through. And that's what other business people have said. There's a play-to-play -play scheme here in Yonkers. You get shaken down. I know. I bet you if I had put money in Nick Spano's pocket, if I had gotten a contract with Empire Strategic Planning, I would be on my second, maybe third daycare center now. But I didn't play that game. I mean, Vinny Spano sent the guy to try to shake me down. $2,000 when he tells me it wasn't going to be Nothing. A steak. My guy do it for you. Don't worry about it. I have a guy that could have done it for me. Why would I need your guy for $2,000? God's crazy. Try to shake you down. And so, to me, we cannot afford to have Mike Spano in for another four years because it is obvious, it is obvious why he wants to remain mayor. And they're going to continue to attack me, folks. I'm going to get a lot of attacks after this podcast, I'm sure. You'll see it all up on their pages, these, you know. And their minions will come out of left field. And that is why 
They have given people jobs. That is why they did all these grand openings. That is why they've been going around promoting people and firemen, police officers, trying to make everyone love Mike Spano to keep him in there because his brother needs him in there, because the developers need him in there, because they got to finish kicking people out. They got to finish changing zoning laws on the east side. Prepare yourselves, folks, over there. And that's what this is all about. Our council people don't work for us. Our politicians don't work for us. Anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. I'm up out of here. Please make sure you spread this word. You start to talk about this. Tell other people about it. This is what's going on. This is what's going on here in the city of Yonkers. Um, that is why, you know, we have this term extension happen, right? This is why. They need Mike Spano in there. They need to continue to control it. They still have developments to, to put up. So uh, start talking about it. We got to come out and vote. Anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. I'm up out of here. Uh, some interesting stuff when you look into the past here in political corruption. I mean, I mean, there's articles from 1969 on Yonkers corruption. Engagement <laughs> politics are filtered. <laughs> You will never get the Democratic Party to endorse you unless you are part of that that crew. If if you're not, you know, um, you know, giving you know a sanction by Tom Meyer, the mayor, and all the really the mayor Nick Spano, you're not going to get the Democratic endorsement. Bottom line, they're going to give that to the mayor. No one else is going to get it. But ever, if you ever want to run for politics, you're a Democrat. As long as Tom Meyer, Zahi Jarris, Tom Meyer Jr. And all those folks control our Democratic Party here. They're only going to give their endorsement to the person that they have chosen. That they, not we, that they have chosen. All right? And they're going to put their candidates for us to choose from. That's it. So we have to change that. So it's important that we come out and vote next year. Again, Zahid Jarris, the individual that has corrupted officials, along with others that are still here, controls the Democratic Party along with Tom Meyer. It's a fact. He, they control our candidates. That's a fact. We have four black women, a majority, you know, a super majority, and it's been a waste. And that is the legacy. And I am saddened by that. Let's get Zahi Jarris up out of here. And any of you judges that are working with Zahi Jarris, you cannot be trusted. You cannot be trusted. Are you going to do favors in the courts? For him, everyone should stay away from Zahi Jarris. He is a two-time felon, has corrupted political officials, has sent people to jail, and is attacking people here in the city of Yonkers using these fake pages along with members of the Yonkers Democratic Committee. That's a fact. Time to get the corruption out of Yonkers. Where's the feds at? Yo, feds, you don't see you got another Sandy and Nobby here? Tasha Diaz, flip-flop? Why did she flip-flop? Why did the mayor, what did the mayor say to them before they went in to vote? Why was he even in there saying anything to them? Feds, are you listening? Feds, are you listening? What did Tasha Diaz get? Hmm? What did she get? What did Lakeisha get? Go check those bank records, feds. Any properties recently purchased? Go check that out, feds. Check it out. Check it out, feds. Where the feds at? I leave anything out. I feel like I left something out. Oh, and by the way, by the way, we gotta keep in mind this uh, ballot harvesting. 
Anthony Mangone. Anthony Mangone admitted to opening sealed ballots and writing Nick Spano's name on them. He admitted to this, but a grand jury did not indict him. Why? Anthony Mangone started out as a Nick Spano aide. He admitted to opening sealed ballots and writing Nick Spano's name on it. Susan Salem found 18 ballots mysteriously to put Nick Spano ahead in his election against uh, Andrea Stewart Cousins the first time, and he won by that amount. Susan Salem is Zahi Jerris's sister. So these people cheat. They will cheat, lie, and steal. That is their careers. Zahi Jerris is a professional scam artist, political scam artist. That is his career. That is why they are going to extremes to get me to shut up because otherwise they're going to be unemployed if Mike Spano is not reelected. Scam artist. Feds, where are you? Hello, Feds. Where are you? Federal Bureau of Investigation, Rye Office. Where are you guys? Hello? Give me a call. Give me a call. I'm ready to talk. So are other people. They got information. You guys got a call. I'm a bad I'm Freddy Vasquez. Where are the feds? No! Let's see what post they put up.